All right, everyone, welcome back for the episode of Carnival Trades. Today is Monday, February 26, 2024. If you haven't done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivortrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it today. So, really, really a sleeper today. So, markets are dipping down just a little bit here as it is 340, but take a look at the spiders volume uh, 36 million shares at 340 p.m. So this is what I would call holiday volume. This is the type of stuff you'd see on a half day. And I'm not even kidding. Like this is the type of volume we'd see on like the day after Thanksgiving or, you know, Easter or one of those uh, half days, Christmas Eve, um, just, you know, totally, totally anemic market. Uh, but we did have a big move, obviously, last Thursday. And, uh, you know, from Wednesday at 3.30 to Friday at 9 30 10 o'clock you know we had a 7 170 point move so we are backing off we did go right into this trend line we slammed right into it friday morning we backed off a little bit but really today's day one of any sort of pullback from this move here because we were still green on friday um and we did kind of i talked about 50 80 earlier in the uh in the short video that's kind of a level i tweeted about this too um and we should you know i said we should at least hammer on that and if we break it you know, we'd be looking at like 50, 60, 50, 65. We didn't even really get there. We got to 50, 70. I think over the next couple of days, we'll probably get down here and maybe even retest uh, 50, 50 or 50, 45. That was kind of your breakup bar from the gap and go on Thursday. I just don't really think that right now after this big move, we're ready to make a new high. I could be wrong about that, but I think we need a little bit more backing and filling if that's going to happen. We're still keeping an eye on this rising wedge here, too. I mean, we did get outside of it and it got negated. But, you know, if you look at this trend line here, at least it's still holding for now and it's proving that it's holding. So we're going to keep it on here, um, especially if we let's say we just pull back and then we shoot down um, and break through it with conviction, which I know it's a lot to ask of bears right now, but um, we'll just keep an eye on it. Um, again, bulls in full control, uh, as long as we're above 49.46, that's where I'd start to get concerned. And then 49.20 is really the big, big level, especially if we got, say, a weekly close below that. Then I think there's a top in place and um, we'll look at downside levels. But right now, bulls in full control and um, there's really no reason for uh, to think anything else, really. Uh, we do have PCE coming up later this week. I think market's probably going to be kind of quiet until then. Um, I, I didn't think we would be, I, I thought today would be soft and, you know, kind of quiet, but I didn't think it would be this quiet. I mean, we were literally in a five point range for the first hour, five points, not 10, not 15, five points. And, you know, like I just told you the volume here, we're not even at 40 million shares. So um, again, let's not make too much out of this action. A couple of things I will say though, we did have, so we talked about that um, bid on bonds last friday that kind of got not negated but yields did get a little bit back of a pop here and recover so if you look at the tyx up 38 cents there so that pattern's still holding up and oil had a nice recovery today so a little bit of a strange kind of one day phenomenon perhaps uh in the market we'll talk about oil and, and bonds later but um definitely coming right back up here so just some you know just something to keep an eye on there you know, does this continue? Does oil start to push up? If oil gets above 79.50, I think that could have certain implications. Um, but right now, that move for the most part got reversed in uh, bonds. Another thing I'm watching too is keep an eye like on the weekly. And I'll try to get rid of these lines here. Noticing like the volatility is kind of increasing at the at, at an extreme. That sometimes can be a signal that there's kind of a top in place or you're getting close to a top and a, an even better example i think is like on nvda because this is this is the market uh, but you're going to see here you know controlled up um you know ascent and then a big wide range candle here with two big tails and still closed up you know very significantly on the week it's not kind of unlike some other periods where you know even like looking at a meta uh weekly you know, when this topped out, we had a similar kind of setup here, just a nice grind and then a big outside move here. And there was a top not too much um, after that. Another good one is like Tesla, you know, kind of a controlled move. And then just these big wide range candles here at the end. Again, it doesn't mean that um, this has to be a top, but just something I'm kind of noticing here and keeping an eye on. You can see the same thing kind of on the cues. So 
kind of a controlled move and then kind of a, a wide range candle that made a new high, but not a new weekly closing high. Just something that catches my eye. Again, it doesn't mean anything until, like I said, we have to break 49.46 to even really get concerned with anything. But um, again, we've talked about this previously. You do have declining, you know, momentum, 79 days, 14 days, 13 days, seven days. What if we hit it again in seven days um, with the RSI? Uh, that's not what I wanted. There we go. With the RSI declining. So again, just some things to keep in mind there. But bulls still full control until proven otherwise here tomorrow. Again, I think we get a little bit more backing and filling, but I think that's really all it is at the moment. Um, triple Q's here up 46 cents. I'd notice a lot of strength today out of IGV. Um, I guess it was disclosed that Pelosi bought Palo Alto. And uh, I think, I, I guess traders are catching on to this now because it was disclosed and it looks like um, there's not really front running, but I guess like back running or piggybacking, you should say, uh, in this. So it looks like people just trying to to play Pelosi's trades now. Uh, I really was upset. I, I hoped, you know, you guys are in the trading room with me. Know I was talking about 260. In fact, it's on. I tweeted about this a, a week ago, and I said if that pierces 260, this is really attractive. That would have been a really nice gain. Um, I had no idea Pelosi was going to get in, but I liked the level. I mean, look at this trend line here, uh, going back to uh, beginning of 23. Um, you got that that breakout area. And then a 618, or excuse me, a 50% fib. They couldn't just let me get it. You couldn't just fall two more dollars. I would have been in this. But um, yeah, that did help out tech today, helped out the IGV. Uh, I think we have Snowflake earnings later this week too, but um, Qs are holding up okay, up eight basis points. Let's not make too much out of that. Um, Russell was pretty strong all day. We actually got a scalp short on this uh, today, which took quite a while, but it, it did work out. Um, and it's holding up on the weekly. I don't really see any issues with it here. It looks okay. You know, if it pulls back, we'll look at um, this upsloping trend line here. But right now it's back above 200, 205 and change is still your uh, your big level there to get through, obviously. Diamond here down 31 cents. Again, we won't make too much out of that. At the moment, SMH up $2.15. Um, some a lot of semis were kind of negative to chopping around though, but it really was Micron. They had news, uh, they had some, um, I think they had, they debuted or um, introduced a new chip or something like that. And um, that's up four and a half percent. So nice move for Micron. It is off the highs, but that is uh, obviously helping out the SMH. Again, tightening range, but we did fail that that breakdown there. On the SMH, the SOX still has this clean trend line, uh, two trend lines there. So keeping an eye on those. Um, again, IGV was very strong all day, up 1.15. It, did, it is backing off a little bit here as you get near the end of the day, but this was really carrying the market. This and, believe it or not, Tesla. So Tesla had a good day as well, up 4%. Um, notable weakness today, Apple was down almost 1%, and Google, this is weak here. You got lower lows, broke that trend line, we back tested it, and now we're down here. We take this pivot out on a close, um, I think Google's in trouble. So again, just some cracks in the armor, some of these Mag7 stocks, like uh, obviously we know Apple, uh, where I just talked about Apple being down. Tesla has been on the weaker side all year. It's getting a bit today, but again, leadership getting thinner. Just be aware of that. The Amazon there is holding up though, and Nvidia and Meta, obviously. All right, anyway, so IGV we mentioned. Um, weekly is still fine here. That um, right now still has a lower high though on the daily. And we did fill that gap. This has a little bit of work to do to firm up, but um, it's okay on the bigger time frames. Dow Transport's fractionally lower. I do like this on the weekly. So if there's anything I, I, I like here, it's, I would say the IWM on the weekly and the, and the DJT. So I think those could get catch up bids if this market continues to hold up. But Transport's fractionally lower today. Again, we're not gonna make too much out of that. Um, interest rates, again, Yields right back up the two year. So the short end is still strong. And that means the, uh, the curve is not um, doing well. So, um, you know, fractionally higher here on the three month tenure, but the twos and tens coming right back in. So a little bit of weakness there. Uh, twos can still push through this area and push, you know, if you get towards 5%, I don't see how there's going to be a May or much less a March cut. Um, We'll see how that works out. Five years, good pattern here. That's set to move higher. Same thing with the 10s, and we already, already talked about the 30s. Good recovery after the outside move on Friday. 
um, XHB holding up okay, up 19 cents. So again, that's still in an uptrend. Still a little overbought on the weekly, but um, no problems really outside of that. Uh, VNQ down just under 1%, nothing terrible going on there. That weekly is not bad either. Um, if we can just continue to firm up. XLF down 15 cents, actually green to red day. So again, we pierced the 40 handle. I talked about that. Um, sometimes you pierce the level a little bit, then you gotta pull back. If we go higher, you know, we'll just say 41 right here with these pivots. And then obviously your double top there. Again, this is also overbought on the weekly, but again, it can still go higher until it can't. <laughs> uh, KRE here, this was on the weaker side today and actually broke down a little bit, made lower lows. It's like one of the only sectors I saw that made lower lows intraday or um, took out Friday's low. Again, I don't love the KRE here pattern wise. And uh, I think it is vulnerable if there is some type of decline. Um, KBE is in a little bit better shape and broker dealers are okay. They're still at all time highs, but the KRE is still under a little bit of pressure. I don't know if that's, um, you know, markets front running RRP run out, uh, which is coming up soon and BTFP, which I think they're, disc they're extending the window anyway, which I don't think anybody's surprised by, but, um, in any case, KRE on the weaker side, uh, oil, we talked about a little bit, nice recovery today. If this breaks through 79.50, it's, it's going to 81.50. There'll be a little resistance there. Um, I know it's an election year, so there's going to be a lot of political pressure to keep this down, but, um, this pattern here is good. And I like the recovery today. I also like what I'm seeing from XLE. XL East looks fine. That's basing under 87. That can move higher in due time. Same thing with XOP. It's basing under 140, 141. Just a little bit more consolidation here. Should push this up towards 145, 147.50. And then OIH uh, down 76 cents. But again, similar kind of pattern up move and just kind of chopping. Reclaim the 50 moving average. This basis here, it should go to 310 and then 320. Um, so again, I like what the, I'm seeing from the energy stocks. That's a good leading indicator for oil. All right, so let's get over to uranium. So last week we talked about uh, CCJ breaking that green bar low. And so that is a breakdown. That doesn't mean we're going to crash or go, you know, you know, down 10% a day. It just means that we're going to look for lower highs here. The first level I'd be looking at is obviously where we broke down from. So we're not that far away. That should get back tested around 42, 42 and change. Next level, you have this pivot low right here with the red bar. So there should be resistance around 45, 46. So those are the retrace levels I'd look for on CCJ. But the interesting thing is, if we look at the URNM, that did get saved by a few pennies on the weekly. It does matter. Even though it was only five cents, it matters. Um, and so what I'm seeing here is, and if you, if you didn't check out the uranium video, go check it out from last week. Um, but the juniors didn't even come close to challenging that green bar low. So seeing leadership, you're seeing potential rotation into other areas of the market, other, excuse me, other areas of the market. Forever, CCJ has been like the gold standard in the uranium and there's not a lot of risk spread out in the sector. A lot of investors are nervous about investing in um, uranium stocks, but seeing that URNJ outperform CCJ is bullish for the long-term structure. It doesn't mean we can't back off and do some consolidation, but um, it is healthy in the long run. So I do like that. I think it's impressive to see some of the uh, other areas of the market start to outperform CCJ for once. Um, that gas here, that um, so they've been gapping that down every Sunday night. And um, they gapped it up today, but gap ups in a downtrend, I never trust that. And you can see we did fade off the highs. Um, again, it's still really attractive down here. I think they spiked the low, though. You know, I don't know how much lower it would go from there. Um, it's already at basically historic lows. <laughs> so um, we'll see what we get. But I do think they'll at least spike that low here. Maybe get a little divergence set up. If we look, I bet you the RSI is probably, yep. So if we take that low out, we're going to have another divergence there in the RSI. So I don't think there's a ton more downside, but, um, you know, we'll see what we get here. It is still very attractive. Uh, dollar index still holding up. Okay. Uh, it did back off a little bit today, as long as it's above 103.50 on a closing basis. I don't see any real problems. It was also up for like seven weeks straight too. So it should, it's due to back off a little bit here. Uh, gold really a flat day. That's uh, still holding up. Okay. Silver was on the weaker side down 44 cents. Uh, needs to stay above this trend line. We've already hit it three times now. So a fourth hit with lower highs uh, could send us down into the 21 handle. Platinum did back off a little bit today. Still like this uh, longer term here. And I still like palladium, which backed off. But that pattern is still just fine for now. Copper. So let's take a look here. We're going to just move this. We talked about that. 
So now that we have a confirmed pivot there, we'll just say that's the trend line now, right? That's the area the market is respecting. And we are backing off of that. I don't even have a good level for this right now. I'll just say 375. So just a lot of chop here in copper. Let's not make too much out of it. Um, Bitcoin made a new highs today. So that did break through. I didn't think this was quite ready, but you know, daily chart, this pattern is crisp and clean and ready, but weekly, you know, it's still a little overbought from that 20 week moving average, but hey, we're above this area. Um, as long as we don't reverse by the end of the week and close below it, I think it's fine. It can go higher. Um, ETH did get up to my target area around 32. So 31.98 was the high of the day. That might go a little higher tomorrow. Next area after that is obviously 36. Um, market set to close here in a few seconds, by the way. Um, but um, alt's looking good. Take a look at Solana. I, this good pattern, weekly in sidebar. Cardano, weekly in sidebar, never changed. Yes, we backed off. A lot of people freaked out because they only look at the daily time frame. Got to zoom out. And uh, you're going to see you have no damage there on the weekly. Look at Matic starting to inch up here. This is getting ready to break out too. So some of these alts are acting well. And again, I don't see any problems here in the sector. So Spiders backed off a little bit into the close. Again, not a big deal. I think tomorrow, you know, we'll probably test 50, 60, um, maybe 50, 40 uh, over the next couple of days. And then, you know, we go into PCE on Thursday. We'll see what that brings. Um, but again, right now, bottom line, I, you know, there's some signs here that the market, you know, maybe looking top heavy, but you, you, you could have been saying that for two months now. Um, and uh, really bottom line until 49, 46 goes or 49, 20, even more so. Uh, bulls are still in control really until proven otherwise. So anyways, guys, going to wrap up here. You guys take care. Come find me at counteroffertrades.com. We'll talk to you guys all tomorrow.